(laughs) So speaking of the what if there is something out there, how did you come up with the antagonist of the story? I I always forget how to pronounce it. (laughs) (laughs) I do too. Yeah, I don't have the book with me here, but basically I I threw together a bunch of sounds that uh, I had been reading. At, At the time, I was in graduate school working on projects for Native American histories. And I tried to come up with a series of sounds that sounded like um, uh, Hopi or Navajo, Diné, uh, and basically, so it's the Aton Eanotokua is how you pronounce it, or at least that's how I pronounce it. I was fairly close. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, How did I come up with them? Okay, well, all of my monsters are, are in part based on the nemesis from Resident Evil 3, which was the most terrifying monster of my childhood. And I, I credit him as the reason why I'm interested in horror. Yeah, dude. I remember my dad used to play uh, Resident Evil 3 when I was a kid. It scared the hell out of me. It scared me to death. I played all the games, but <laughs> 3 scared the hell out of me. I actually still have nightmares about the nemesis. So, so the, you know, when I come up with a monster, it starts off, okay, it's the nemesis. Now you got to change it a little bit so you're not co- you know, committing copyright infringement, right? So this, this monster is like this giant hulking alpha male framed creature with, you know, a a hodgepodge of, of putrefied skin and, you know, bone and animal parts sticking out of him. And he's wrapped in some horrible, um, you know, some ragged clothing that he probably stole off a corpse. And, um, he may remind you of the monster from In the Devil's Dreams because they're they're very similar, except this one's a little bit more animalistic. It can't actually talk. It it more mimics the things that people say. Um, then I wanted it to uh, I wanted it to kind of cross the uncanny valley a little bit, and that that's a concept in horror that uh, the closer something is to human, the more creepy it is. It's super interesting. Like people are more creeped out generally by like a mannequin moving around than by like a giant spider or a giant snake. Um, Because the things that look human kind of are not supposed to act like human. So it confuses your brain and you get these like mixed signals about it. Right. So I didn't want it to be a dinosaur or a spider or a, you know, a, a slime monster or something. I wanted it to be really close to a human but I wanted it to also look really scary. So I was like, okay, why don't I just make it like an animal sort of in appearance, but why don't I have it try to behave like a human? Have you seen the YouTube videos of like cats talking, like trying to talk like humans? Yeah. It's super weird. (laughs) It's very, really creepy. Um, Yeah. Like it's like weird guttural yet high pitched sounds. (laughs) And the reason why it's creepy is not really because of the sounds, but because of their similarity to the sounds that we make. So that idea was sort of the catalyst for this monster. And I, uh, at the time, my wife was, she is a, an exotic animal trainer. She's a certified zookeeper. And so she was uh, working at a, at a zoo where they had this African gray parrot um, who would talk to me. Every time I went up to visit, this African gray parrot loved me and I would, I would like sit there and bond with her. And I was like, what if the monster is like a parrot? What if it just mimics what people do? And then I had the idea that like, what if it's, what if it's not people's voices and stuff that it's trying to mimic, but it's gathering information from their dreams. It can somehow access their minds while they're asleep. And it uses that information, like it may be a dream of your dead mother or something um, to lure you out into the dark. And that's it. 